Every once in a while, a hybrid angelfish pops up in the hobby, always commanding what I would consider to be insane prices, at least compared to the average cost of a reef fish. Pygmy angelfish are some of the most popular aquarium fish that we keep in our reef tanks. I've had a pair of pygmy potters angelfish in my reef tank for years now, and they've been absolute model citizens for me. They add some color and interest to a tank, they dart amongst the rocks, they provide a yet-to-be-done captive breeding opportunity with their evening spawnings. In fact, did you know that as a group, pygmy angelfish are amongst the most common to produce hybrids in the hobby? Given that, it's kind of impressive that hybrid angelfish don't show up all that often. A paper was recently published, and it's titled Angels in Disguise, Sympetric Hybridization in the Marine Angelfishes is widespread and occurs between deeply divergent lineages. The lead author, Yi Kai Ti, is also very active on Twitter, where he goes by the name Kai the Fish Guy. I would highly recommend giving him a follow. He's a really talented photographer and he posts some of the most amazing photos that you're likely to see online of marine fish. Incidentally, he also has a book coming out soon, so watch for that as well. Now, think about how angelfish spawn. Both the male and the female just spiral up into the water together, releasing eggs and sperm, which are just left to mix and hopefully produce some offspring. It's no wonder that fish like this produce hybrids at a far higher rate than land animals. All that would really have to happen is two different species spawning near each other and then some mixing happens. From there, it's really just a matter of how compatible the two species are genetically to determine if a hybrid is possible. And for pygmy angelfish at least, species seem to be very compatible. In fact, there are more than 173 species of marine fish that we know that produce hybrids, and 48% of marine angelfish, 42 different species of them produce hybrids. Now, angelfish are not the only fish that commonly produce hybrids. Butterfly fishes are also pretty common. 39% of butterfly fish species are known to hybridize. In the paper, the team used visual means to look for hybrids. So that's something that we can do ourselves just while we're in stores. Look for angelfish that have an aberrant or an intermediate coloration between species. You find that and you're probably looking at a hybrid fish. Now, I bet that they're a lot more common in the hobby than we expect and a lot more common than the prices would lead you to believe. For example, look at this chart from the paper showing the hybridization of four different angelfish species. Note how the parent species first paragraph or the first column, the second column, they're related and visually, and, but some of them are pretty different, right? Um, yet the resulting hybrid is identifiably a mix of those two. That's of course not always the case. Hybrids can cross back with a parent species in the wild and end up being visually identical to the original species. So a visual inspection is not going to be absolutely 100% accurate. The team from the paper did test how accurate a visual inspection would be using DNA, and they found in most cases it did in fact work to identify hybrids. You just need to have a keen eye to notice the differences. It's nice that we can at least mostly rely on that though, because as hobbyists, we can't do DNA sequencing and that sort of thing. As you would expect, most hybrid angelfish occur in the wild where their natural ranges overlap. But fish do travel, and you can find hybrids outside of the range of the parent species some of the time. Of course, hybrids are far more common in the areas where the two species do overlap, not just geographically, but you also have to consider the depth and the habitat. Butterfly fish hybrids are way more common in the ranges where both parents are found, and that's possibly because they tend to form lifelong male-female pairs versus the groups and harems that some pygmy angelfish form. Pygmy angelfish also are able to change from female to male, which makes it easier for them to break off and spread their, their range and hybridization through accidental or even purposeful interbreeding between species. As usual, the paper is linked down below in the description. I encourage you to check it out. It's open access. Give a look at Kai the Fish Guy's Twitter too. You won't regret giving him a follow. I'll also link his website down in the description. He's got a lot more of his photography there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you, and I will see you next time. Until then, stay safe, be kind to each other. Bye.